This machine is a Hyundai Wea moving column horizontal borer uh, with a B axis and a W axis quill. Uh, these are my uh, live training videos for this machine. Control panel now. So if we look at this area here that says mode, uh, that's our manual mode, our MDI mode, our memory mode, zero return mode, that's that ZRN, our edit mode and our tape mode which will be uh, a direct numerical control type thing where we can run it, drip feed it from a computer. So first of all the manual mode, I'm going to use that for um, starting the spindle manually, for jogging around um, and for hand wheel type stuff. The MDI is our manual data input where we write programs, sections of program to do things like tool changes. Memory is when we're going to run the machine in its memory mode in auto. Um, zero return ZRN, this is what we do if we want to make the machine pass over its zero points or when we first switch the machine on we'll need to do this. The edit button there that's for editing programs, altering programs. And I said this tape control is your direct numerical control. So we're going to use these handles to move the machine around. And it's a bit unusual in the way that it works. But um, if we move this lever to the left, we get rapid. And if we move it to the right, we get jog or feed. The rapids are controlled by this rapid overrider switch. And then we've got the jog which is going to be controlled by this potentiometer. So all we do is we use, um, we can select Z minus Z plus, X minus X plus, and then we've got Y and we've got W. So depending on which lever we move over, we get that axis to move, or we can actually move them both together if we leave it over. So just be a bit, little bit careful with that. And then we adjust this potentiometer to give us whatever feed rate we want when we're doing the jog and this one at the top here that will jog the spindle so we can move the spindle around you know if we change an insert so we can use it to jog it around um, and all these you you would um, you would have to be in that manual mode that green button pressed in and lit up to say you're in manual so we use that to jog everything around also don't forget our absolutely all important e-stop button here should stop everything almost dead um, don't ever be afraid to hit that you will need to reset it if you uh, hit it you'll have to spin it around to make it release but uh, keep your eye on that make sure you know exactly where that is in case you do have any emergency these two buttons are our cycle start and feed hold so when we press the green button um, that starts the program running and the feed hold just holds the machine where it is. So it doesn't stop the spindle or anything. It just stops the movement. And once we press the green cycle start button again, the movement continues. So we can use that at any time in conjunction with our distance to go to hold the machine when it's actually in the memory mode. The tool change on this machine uh, uses a T code to tell it what tool you want and an M6 to change the tool. So to do a tool change we'd say T1 M6 and that would get us T1. Now if we put a T number on its own it will pre-select that tool so to get that tool ready it'll move it around so it's ready to change into the uh, into the machine. And that's where this, this you see this where it says tool spindle where you've got two choices here on the left where the red display is the tool that's either in the spindle or waiting depending on where you actually position this switch so you can see what tools waiting and what tools in the spindle um, it's really important not to hit reset on this machine when it's doing a tool change because it will stop and it will mess up the tool change and it is quite a game to get the thing back where it is so all the while try not to um, just be patient and if it's not doing anything just wait and just go around the side and have a look and see what it's doing but uh, you do that at your peril because it is uh, quite tricky to get the machine back once you reset it through a tool change so let's take a look at the uh, rest of this control panel so as we said before we've got these mode buttons I've been through 
what they all do. Then we're going to look at where it says function. We've got this single block, that means that if we've got that depressed and it's lit up, each time we press our cycle start button it will only read one block and wait for us. We've got a dry run feature. If we turn this on then everything's controlled by this feed rate dial. Uh, machine lock effectively locks everything. Uh, you could run a program with machine lock on and the machine doesn't move, it just whizzes through the program. We've got our block skip, which means if we've got a slash in front of any line of code, it will skip it. We've got our optional stop, which means if we've got an M1 or M01, it will, um, it will uh, stop at that command. We've got a Z cancel button, which means your Z axis doesn't move, so your program will whiz round, but your Z axis won't move downwards. Um, you've got a handle interrupt, not normally used, but can be used to move the move around with the hand wheel uh, after we've interrupted a program. If you've got that option, program restart again is an option, um, and through spindle coolant that will override this through spindle coolant if you've got it. Uh, then looking at the status lights, we've got the program stop, which means it's read an M0 or an M1. Got when your machine's in an alarm state, there's a spindle orientation button. That means the spindle's read an M19 and it stopped at that position, the M19 position. ATC, that means the ATC's at, at its home position. We've seen the clamp and unclamping of the tool. We've got an auto power shutdown there, which if we put that on, when it reads an M30, the machine will shut down. Uh, we've got the flood coolant on and off, that can override your coolant supply. Uh, this one is for your swarf conveyor, you can override that or make it switch on or make it switch off. Uh, then you've got your work light switching on your work light. And then if we look at this key switch, it's got a lock and a write, so lock would lock out any editing of programs. If you didn't want some, anyone to touch your program, you could lock it and remove the key. The write will allow editing of programs, and then the setup mode allows you to do extra things with the door open um, when it's in the setup mode. Final look at these dials down here. You've got your spindle override, which would normally be at 100%, giving you 100% of the programmed RPM which you could take up or down. Your rapid control which is F0 which is set to a very slow rapid 25%, 50 and 100%. The next one is the overrider for your feed which again should normally be at 100% um, and you can take that up to 150. Then we've got our feed rate which is for our jogging or if we use dry run that's our jog um, feed rate. This green button down the bottom here is uh, the button that we tur turn on the control, turns on the hydraulics. So when you uh, start first turn on the machine you'll need to press that and then obviously that emergency stop at the end there.